It is that time of the week. It is time for our weekly segment, AI Decoded. Welcome to AI Decoded, the time of the week when we dive deep into some of the most eye-catching stories in the world of artificial intelligence. This is my favourite part of the week uh, because it is such a fast-moving story. So if you have thoughts, questions on issues that we're covering, do send them in. I'm learning like you and I want to know what you think at C Fraser BBC on X. So do send in your questions. We'll start tonight with this story in The Independent. Google say their deep mind system has made another major breakthrough in one of the most difficult tests for AI in geometry. Uh, we'll tell you why that is such a big step forward. Politico reports last minute tweaks to the EU's Artificial Intelligence Act, which would allow law enforcement to use facial recognition technology on recorded video without a judge's approval. Is that a U-turn? The Times feature an opinion from two lawyers who say AI should not be used in trial until the technology properly learns how to reason. The FT carries the latest announcements from Samsung, who have new smartphones capable of running generative AI. They will translate foreign languages as you go. <laughs> Need to get myself one of those. Uh, and remember the old joke, you stand around waiting for a bus and three turn up at once? Well, not anymore. Uh, the UK operator First Bus has told the BBC they will use AI to design and automatically update timetables. No more, no more bunching, which if, that, if that's not the best story of the week, I don't know what is. Um, some other good news. Uh, Priya is here. Priya Lakhani, founder and CEO of the AI education and technology company Century Tech. Hello. Nice Hi, to see you. Hi, it's good to see you. Um, let's start then with the independent story on uh, DeepMind. Why yep. does it matter? Why should we be taking interest in a system that can do geometry? It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> you see my eyes yeah, I did. Over. That's why I'm in words yeah, and not in numbers. I spent a good few hours yeah. reading the Nature article that they published um, this uh, th this paper in, and it, and it is really really interesting. The reason why we should all be taking interest is that so some of us have been playing with those chatbots, right? And they'll come up with an answer, but sometimes if you ask it a math question, even if you get the result that you were looking for, the correct answer, actually the proof in the middle is is a lot of nonsense, right? Maths is a language of truth, Christian, right? There is a, a single answer, but there may be many ways in which you can get to that answer. So the reason why this is significant is that geometry, and particularly because they competed in the, well, they didn't compete, they took sort of former international mathematical Olympiad questions, right? They built a model, and, and this is why it's significant. Firstly, they didn't have the training data to train an AI model to do geometry, right? Mm -hmm. So they, essentially created synthetic data, right? It was very, very clever. It's a very innovative thing to do. We don't have the data, so let's circumvent the problem and let's create synthetic data. And they trained a model with half a billion uh, geometric diagrams and then created 100 million proofs. So this isn't actually real data that we're used to dealing with. When we talk about AI often in the past, mm -hmm. we're using real life data or we're training things on the World Wide Web that exist, so human created mm -hmm. data. They created synthetic data. They fed it into these models. And the second thing is that they combined two forms of engineering, so two methods of developing AI technology, right? Bear with me, I'll take yeah, you through it, okay. okay? So one is symbolic engines, right? Where essentially they use this engine to, which, we, and this, this sort of AI requires knowledge and logic. It requires sets of rules, okay? Yeah. So they said, here's a geometry problem, solve that with the knowledge and the logic and the rules that you know. And if it solves it, fine. But if it doesn't, they then combine that with a neural network, uh, a language uh, network, and they trained that. So the language, language networks don't need the rules and guidance that a, a symbolic engine do, right? What, right? what that can do is it can do pattern recognition and it can be quite creative, actually. And I'm going to get people shouting at me about creativity and AI yeah. in a minute, but, but bear with me. It, it, it works in a different way. So let's say you've got this triangle. OK, and you want to solve the problem of a triangle. You say two sides are the same. That's an equilateral triangle. And you want to say now prove that the ang two of the angles are the same. OK, it can go through the symbolic engine. It solves the problem. You're fine. If it doesn't, it would go back to the other AI engine. And that might say, well, here's an idea. Split the triangles in half. Right. So you've now got two triangles. So it'll come up with these creative ideas, go back through the symbolic engine to try and solve that until it comes up with so a solution. So you've got one system layered so over another. But this is this is where some of us, you know, who, who don't work in your field get a little bit worried because that to me is an element of reasoning. 
Th well, this is the third thing, exactly, this is the final. So it's an element of reasoning. So when we think about math, by doing that and coming up with the answers and solving 25 out of the 30, which is a gold medal for geometry in the Olympiads. It's not a gold medal in maths overall yeah. because there's other maths types of problems, okay? Yeah. Um, but the reason why it's really interesting is because what does mathematics require you to do, right? It's full of logic, it's full of reasoning, it's full of um, actually critical analysis. It's full of looking at consistency, consistency checking, it's looking at contradictions, and then it's applying it to real world, world problems, mm. right? And so that's why it's, it is absolutely significant because if they can continue to do this, yeah. then they can demonstrate that AI can conduct reasoning. Although mathematicians shouldn't fear too much, right? Because yeah. this don't, is- Don't point at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I was being polite. This is, yeah. uh, I was being inclusive. Yeah. So uh, this is, um, but the reason why, you know, we're still a long, long way away of things. If you think about like Fermat's theorem, mm. for example, it's created in the 1600s and he wrote in the margins of a book, right? Mm. Here's a theory, but, and he literally wrote, but the margin doesn't have, uh, there's no space for me to write the proof. And it mm. took 357 odd years for someone to prove it, which Andrew Wiles did, right? And it's a lot of different, again, it's all of that mathematics, right? It's mm. very, very complicated. This is sort of below college level advanced mathematics. So we still have a long way to go, but we should be excited about this because you know, engineering, architecture, um, physics, there's all sorts of areas, medical research, where if you can start to solve math, math problems at that a level that humans yeah. can't, yeah. then we might be able to solve problems and answer questions that we haven't been able to do so before to solve some of the world's biggest issues. Another uh, uh, contentious area mm. for AI is facial recognition. Yes. Um, so I want to talk about this, the, the, this, this story about the EU um, maybe not U-turning, but, but sort of uh, going somewhere where we've been very critical of China. We, we've talked about facial recognition in live terms as people walk around town centres. It's not going as far as that because it's recorded video. But it's yeah. a step in that, well, it's a step in that direction, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I'm, I'm really alarmed by it. I was so shocked by this. We've analysed the EU AI Act on, on, on this programme at the BBC before, and it was very, very clear uh, what the view on facial recognition is. So I'm, I'm actually not surprised why some members of the European Parliament are, are up in arms about this. And they're saying, hang on, why is this last minute wording change mm. happened? And it looks like a loophole. Now, what they're saying is that we could use recorded video footage, right? And for, for crimes, we could then use facial rec recognition on top of that. Now, there were exceptional circumstances in the, in the EU AI Act pre-Christmas, right? But the thing is here, you don't need to go to a judge to use it, that's what's significant. Right. So for example, you may end up with some sort of petty crime or you may end up with a protest on the street, then using, for example, CCTV uh, footage and recordings to then spot who those people are is, is so in stadiums, probably, for instance, if yeah. you're looking for troublemakers, you'd spot them in an instant. But, how, but, how good is this technology, though? Right, okay, this technology is amazing. Companies. Okay, because I've seen it. I was So there's a company called Clearview AI, and last year in LA, they were demonstrating the technology. You can see it online. It's actually, it, it's extraordinary. So. The, the founder CEO demonstrated the technology and explained that the feds in the US were looking for uh, somebody who was a suspect in a rape, so significant crime. They couldn't find this suspect anywhere. And then they used Clearview AI. They found the suspect's image in the background of someone else's Facebook photo holding a pool cue in a bar in, I don't know where, maybe Ohio, wherever it was, mm. right? But it was nowhere near uh, where the alleged crime had taken place, mm. okay? They went to that area, they found the suspect, and then the investigation proceeded. Mm -hmm. And when you look at this, mm -hmm. th this image, th this software will spot you in the background image, even with a different haircut, if you have a beard at any point, <laughs> if you grow a beard, it will be able to spot you. It's, 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 it's actually that. incredible. I, and I think, I, I get the impression that what the EU have done is they've looked at this sort of software and they thought, actually, this will help law enforcement, right? The reason I said, why isn't it like real time? As I know that China, obviously, with you know, been picking Uyghur Muslims off the street. They've been telling children they've been jaywalking and they've been using mass surveillance for this. But you take images on your smartphone, right? So yeah. do I. We upload them, right? Is it, and it's not instant, but those images end up online somewhere to be used and to be... Uh, scraped by these sorts of companies pretty quickly. Yeah. So and are the are, yeah the, and are the guardrails 
are the guardrails and privacy. I think the, the, and the key is privacy. So do you want to end up in a in a situation in China where people live in fear? You've got that chilling factor. I think that's the key, mm. right? People live We've in fear. We've seen how it's been used. We've yeah. seen that. We don't want that in Europe. Um, time's ticking. Let's yeah. try and rattle through some of these uh, these other ones. Um, look, Priya is a barrister. I mean, there is nothing that was Priya can't do. <laughs> uh, was a barrister. <laughs> now is an AI expert. Um, trial by AI. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see a future where... It's a really interesting article for the viewers because we're rushing we time. You judges. should read it. We could do with it. We're not going <laughs> to... I think we're going to end up in a, situ a situation absolutely where it augments a lot of things that we do, including judgments, right? Because you're looking at AI, what's the benefit, OK? Can it actually be more objective than, than, than a judge? The problem with all of this, right, mm. is that actually AI is fed with data, right? And if it's bias in, you get bias out. At the same mm. time, humans also have bias, right? And the reason it's not going to replace judgments... But magistrate's judgments, where you've, you've perhaps done something wrong in your car, that's a pretty straight up and down, isn't it? In every single proceeding, if someone represents themselves, what's equally important in terms of the substance, you know, as well as the substance of what they say is their, their demeanour, how they say it, their tone. I've seen this so many times. It's not... This is not a worry for us. And yeah, the article is absolutely right. But if it can help us in some areas, great. Um, I'd ask the viewers to look at Compass in the US, a, okay. parole, a parole AI judgment system that went horribly wrong because of bias. Right. Um, because that's super interesting, but I'm sure it'll come up again in okay. AI decoders. We're just a minute and a half left, so yep. I'm gonna editorialize. Go let's, on, do the, let's, let's do the buses. <laughs> <laughs> my bus comes in threes. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody else's does. What's, what, how are they going to do this quickly? They've got a company and they take the data, they create a digital twin of the logistics and the infrastructure, how the buses run. When you create a digital tin, twin, you can essentially use predictive analysis to figure out which bus routes are best, how can we optimise them, how can we schedule, how can we create great timetables that work for Christian so he's not getting three buses on a time. How no bunching. How can we make him a happy man so he can come and do the context on time and not be late? And um, the, this, is, this is a fantastic exact use of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And the more we have this in logistics, in supply chains, infrastructure product, projects, the better. And that is exactly what, where you're going to see the world go. Uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah. Don't well, forget here on time. We need more time on this. I ne we never get through all the stories. There's so much to say. I talk so too much, much that is new. Um, <laughs> and maybe we'll, we'll try and find some more time in weeks to come. Uh, listen, Priya, thank you very much uh, for that. We will do this same time again uh, next week. Uh, do hope that you'll join us for that.